Uh, Casey Edwards is the author of 30 Something and the Clock is Ticking. She joins us now live from Melbourne. Hi, Casey. Hello, thanks for having me on. Oh, our hey. pleasure. Did you believe in the idea of a biological clock before it happened to you? What really surprised me was to discover just how fast it was ticking. Um, I was only 32 when my gynaecologist told me that in terms of my fertility, it was now or never. And that was really shocking to me because I thought I had years and years to go before I needed to worry about that. And I think a lot of women make that same mistake. We see Hollywood stars, 40-something stars on the front pages of magazines having babies and we assume that we can do it too and, and statistically we just can't and a lot of the cases I suspect that those 40-something women are not even using their own eggs because I sat in an IVF clinic full of desperate and devastated women who just simply waited too long. Casey, we always hear the term biological clock attached to women. Is it something, and I'm, I'm not meaning this to be flippant at all, but is it something men can experience as well? Yeah, that's really interesting, Larry, because we do worry that it's just our problem. And women have said to me, I have, I've got this problem, but my boyfriend doesn't have to worry. Well, actually he does. Um, almost 50% of cases in IVF clinics are there because the man is having fertility problems. And mm. after the age of 35, there is increased DNA damage to sperm, which leads to an increased risk in autism, Down syndrome, lower IQ, and all sorts of things that you don't want. So it really is a problem for both men and women. Okay, well, not only did you have to beat the clock, but also the prospect of infertility as well. What did you learn from your experiences, Casey? Um, one thing I learnt was um, conception sex or sex under duress is all bad. And it's even bad for men too, because I was of the belief that, you know, men, they were up for it any time, anywhere. But it turns out that even men struggle with the idea of having their sex life reduced to meeting requests and um, circle dates in diaries. Um, yeah. And it can also be really inconvenient. I remember um, once I, I was boarding a flight to London and I ovulated just as we were boarding and <laughs> you are only fertile for 24 hours a month and a flight to London is 24 hours. So I wasn't going to miss that opportunity. So I can tell you with authority that aeroplanes are not designed for ovulating couples with fertility problems. Something did you to have, keep in mind. Yeah, do you have to declare that on the immigration form when you land? <laughs> You've explored many of the pros and cons of motherhood, even starting out uh, thinking that new mums were boring. So uh, what did you learn and have your views changed uh, as a result? Yeah, look, in the beginning, I didn't think that motherhood was any sort of accomplishment because I thought, you know, anyone can do it, right? Anyone who can get a man to sleep with them can have a baby. Um, but it wasn't until I started researching motherhood that I realised what an amazing sacrifice motherhood was. And, and that made me think, why would you do it? Like, why would anyone willingly choose to clean up bodily fluids for 24 hours a day without being paid for it? And what sane person would choose to sacrifice their identity and their career and their finances and and their pelvic floor muscles like it just seemed like a really bad deal but yet people do it no. and then some people they do it again um, but seriously one of the things that I did discover was that there is a big difference between loving your child and loving the lifestyle that motherhood imposes and I think that most women would lay down their lives for their children, but it's actually quite normal to miss your old life and to grieve for the things that you've sacrificed. And I think that if people understood the two things were separate, there would be a whole lot less guilt and judgment and secrecy about mm. motherhood. Okay, well, Casey's book is called 30 Something and Over It. It's out in bookstores now. Casey, thank you so much. Thank you, it's Good a pleasure. To talk to you. Thank you, Casey.